What's going on, YouTube? So after many years of fighting, I think it can officially be said that Tesla has moved into the mainstream. They are selling record numbers of products all around the world and even convinced us to get on board with a Model 3. That success made it pretty obvious that they should move into the most important luxury segment with this all new Tesla Model Y. So is Tesla's first compact crossover a game changer or is it just a taller Model 3? Let's go ahead and find out. Now before we begin, we do want to take a second to specially thank our friend Aaron for loaning us this brand new Tesla Model Y performance. He actually has a fleet of Teslas which he rents out on Turo. So if you ever want to try one out before you buy or just drive one for a special occasion, make sure to reach out to him with the links and contact info we've provided in the description. All right, so getting started here with the exterior design. To state the obvious, of course, it does look very similar to the Tesla Model 3 since they do share about 75% of the same parts. Um, so that being said, of course, your front end here is uh, basically blank. There's not really a grill. Uh, Tesla doesn't do the fake, whole fake grill thing, but you do have a small opening down here at the bottom. And then as far as your headlights, they are also the same as in the Model 3. So they are fully LED with your LED daytime running light and turn signal. Down below here, you also have a standard LED fog light. Now that I'm down here, uh, of course, one of the big differences about getting the Model Y is that it sets up higher. Uh, the ground clearance on this is going to be 6.6 .6 inches, which is about an inch taller than the Model 3. So it's not super tall for a crossover, but you do have more ground clearance. Now down here at the wheels, of course, you do have a totally new set of options for the Model Y. So standard on the Model Y is going to be a 19 inch wheel. Um, on the long range, you can upgrade to a 20 inch induction wheel. And then when you go for this performance model, you can get the performance upgrade package and that gets you these awesome looking 21 inch Uber turbine wheels. Um, they're absolutely insane looking here in person. Um, now I will qualify though, a little delicate. Um, it does have a kind of a matte finish and Unfortunately, this example was involved in a little accident uh, last night, apparently. So, um, you know, do keep in mind that this matte finish might be a little higher maintenance, but they look amazing. As far as the tires on this performance, they are staggered 255s in the front, 275s in the rear. And then with the performance upgrade package, it also adds performance brakes. And then heading up here to your mirrors, they are a bit wider than in the Model 3. Um, we also have standard heating and power folding, though looking at it, it appears that this model is missing auto dimming, which is a little strange since our Model 3 uh, does have auto dimming. Now before we get around to the rear design of this Model Y, we do need to pause here at the side because this is probably the area where this car looks most different from the Model 3. Um, and as far as the overall dimensions, it is larger than the Model 3 in all specs. Um, so it's 3 inches wider, 7 inches taller, and 2 inches overall in length longer than the Model 3. Um, and that does roughly place it in line with some of its rivals like the BMW X3. Now, as far as other stuff to talk about here at the side, obviously one of the bigger styling changes for this Model Y is that it comes with the Chrome Delete package. So your door handles here are gonna be black as well as all the moldings around uh, the windows and here at the mirrors. And coming around to the Y's rear design, I have to say it looks really, really good in person. You have that sloping back roof design. And as far as your differences from the Model 3, up top we do have a carbon fiber spoiler on the performance model, and you do have the same fully LED taillights. However, down here at the bottom, you do have this black uh, plastic cladding all throughout the bottom to give this a really rugged look. And as far as the towing, Tesla has just released the towing package for this Model Y, and it can tow 3,500 pounds with that optional package. 
All right, so for those of you who are looking to get a Model Y right now, probably a big concern is the build quality for these first uh, release Ys. And I do want to talk about a couple of different things that are wrong with this particular Model Y performance. Um, so during our day with it, we've noticed a couple different things. For one, this bumper piece, uh, it's definitely not aligned and it honestly looks like I could stick my finger in and peel it back. Um, another thing I'm going to mention is that some of these body panels just do not line up exactly right. Um, this will probably be fixed with, you know, the later generations in the Model Y, but you are gonna have some of those, you know, just when they're first getting started, it does have, tends to have some issues. Um, in addition, uh, the tailgate, it gets like stuck and then kind of snaps up. Now there are a few other things wrong with this Model Y, but we're gonna do a very detailed analysis in another video that we will link in the description. Um, but that pretty much concludes the exterior of this all new Model Y. So let's go ahead and hop on the inside before we take this performance model on a drive. So as you would expect for a new Tesla, getting in is not the same as in your average car. So what Tesla does is provide you with this uh, NFC card. This acts as your key, or you also add the application uh, to your phone and then the Bluetooth will let you in. This is basically the backup, but since this is not our vehicle, uh, we're just gonna use the key for today. When you're using the key, what you do is put it right here on the car and then the vehicle will unlock. And of course, like the Model 3, you just press in on that fat part and pull out the door handle to get inside. Now taking a first look inside the cabin, of course you're not going to see any real surprises here because this is basically identical to the Model 3. And as far as your different interior material and color options, those are also going to be the same as in the Model 3. So what you'll be looking at is two options. Uh, you have a standard leatherette seating, um, but you have the choice between black or white leather. And when you choose the black leather, that's where you'll get this wood trim. And if you choose the white leather, you'll get a white trim instead. Turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely finished. You have leather all through here with the color contrast stitching, Alcantara through the middle portion, and the top part is soft touch. All four of your windows here are one touch automatic and that is your electronic door handle release. You also notice aluminum pedals. These come on the performance model with the optional performance upgrade. And then as far as the seats themselves, they are 12-way power adjusting with four-way lumbar support standard across the board. And like I was already saying, this is a leatherette. Um, it does a very good job of mimicking though. Uh, very soft and supple. And from owning a Model 3, I can attest they are very, very comfortable, especially on long trips. Now, of course, being a Tesla, a lot of you guys are going to be concerned about the build quality. And I have to say, all of the obvious stuff up here in the front does fit together quite well. And as far as the actual materials themselves, they are the same as the Model 3. So you have a soft touch upper dashboard. You have this piece of real wood trim that runs through all the middle areas. And then moving down here, we have a leatherette that padding down here for your uh, knee to rest against. And then the center part is finished in a piano black trim. And everything does feel pretty solid. Now, of course, to start up the model, there is not any type of button anywhere. Uh, if you had your phone paired, you could just go ahead and get in, put your foot on the brake, and then press the shifter. But since we have the key card, uh, we're going to have to set it right there in that space between the cup holder and the center console. Once you do that, put your foot on the brake, and it does start up. Now, obviously, there are no traditional gauges. The left side of this display acts as your gauge cluster. So of course you've got your traditional stuff like your shift position as well as your charge. Uh, we also have the car. This will show kind of a visual display of the road once you start driving. And then down here you have some basic stuff like your tire pressure and how many miles and stuff like that. 
I do want to note though that even though this is the performance model, you do not have a head-up display. Now coming back to the steering wheel, of course you do have electric power assisted steering and you've got the same really nice small diameter thick rimmed uh, Tesla steering wheel. Very minimalistic of course so you've got just your two buttons here for a variety of functions including things like your um, steering wheel adjustment so you can do that and as you can see you have a standard power adjusting steering wheel but heating remains unavailable and then as far as your windshield wipers they are standard rain sensing. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about interior your storage. Now, it is the same as in the Model 3. However, it's also larger than in most of the competition. So when you take this out, uh, you'll notice you have a pretty large center bin. It is really nicely felt lined as well. But where the big amount of storage is, is going to be underneath of these magnetic plates. So you can pop that open. Uh, we have a wireless phone charger on board, so that's cool. Um, and then down through here, you have an absolutely gigantic amount of storage. Um, to be honest, this absolutely blows away things like the Audi Q5 and Mercedes GLC. Now, one of the ways that Tesla did save some space uh, was by going with this Mercedes-style shifter up here on the column. So obviously, what you do is just push down for drive, and then you push up the opposite direction for reverse. And when you go into reverse, you will notice a really nice high resolution backup camera. It's also very large, um, but there is no 360 degree camera option. So that's a little strange for a car that basically has cameras all around it. Uh, that being said, you do have standard front and rear parking sensors, of course. Um, and then you can get automatic parking if you choose the full self-driving option. Additionally, both the mirrors do tilt down when in reverse to help you see the parking lines. And then for park, you're just going to press the end of the stock. All right, so now that pretty much brings us to this display. Obviously, inside of this 15-inch display is virtually every function of the vehicle. So we'll just kind of go through some of the main stuff. I'm not going to talk about every single thing because we'd be here for about two hours. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is start off with the climate controls. So you get to that by pressing that button right there. It is dual zone automatic, and you adjust the fan speed or the uh, you adjust the vents by doing this action right here. So it's very cool uh, and futuristic, just like in the Model Three. Additionally, you have standard three stage heated seats for both the driver and the passenger, um, but seat ventilation remains unavailable. And then sliding over to the right of this, you have your volume control. Of course, you can also use the steering wheel mounted control if you prefer. Um, and as far as your audio system, you have a standard 14 speaker immersive sound system. Um, so let's go ahead and take a sample of that. Sound quality of this system is excellent. Um, it is definitely, even though unbranded, certainly a very, very premium and high caliber sound system. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of go through a few of the functions. What I'll start with here is going to be our navigation system since it's right here taking up the majority of the display. Um, obviously, we have the full satellite maps, and they are extremely detailed and look fantastic. Um, very responsive system, of course. There's a lot of horsepower behind this display. Now, it is worth keeping in mind, though, that this map setup here is only included free for one year. After that, you will have to pr pay for premium connectivity. And the same also goes for the internet as well as the in-car streaming of music and video. Um, as far as other things to point out, um, you do not have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay on board. So if you really like those systems, you're not going to find them here in the Tesla. Um, but, of course, this system does work better than many of the rivals' um, systems, so you may not actually miss having them around. Now, as far as what's different 
for the Model Y. Um, there's really only one main difference inside of this display, and that's if you go to the driving section, you can find a new button here called Off-Road Assist. Um, so you can turn that on, and basically that just modulates and changes some traction control settings and some autopilot settings just to make things better off-road. Um, you do also miss out on the track mode, which is available in the Model 3 performance when you choose the Model Y performance. Now moving on up from that, you will find a frameless auto dimming mirror. And then up at the very top, you have an impressive standard feature, a standard panoramic moonroof. Now for those of you who really know the Model 3 well, you'll recognize that there is a difference here. The Model 3 actually has a pillar that runs through the middle part, um, whereas on the Model Y, that pillar has been relocated to the very back. So you actually have this just outrageously impressive piece of glass, uh, just really encompassing and looks fantastic here with no interruptions. All right, so first getting back into this Model Y's rear seat. Obviously, this is a huge aspect for this Model Y since this will be a family vehicle. And I have to say that I am so impressed once I got back here. There is space galore in this Model Y. Um, as a matter of fact, this is probably the largest uh, offering in the class. It definitely bests the X3 and GLC. Um, and as far as your technical legroom figures, you're gonna be looking at 40 inches of rear legroom and 39 inches of rear headroom, which is over five inches larger than the Model 3, and you can definitely feel that back here. Uh, behind your seating position, I probably have eight to nine inches of rear leg rim, and my feet, I do want to mention this, um, so Tesla has actually raised the front seats up to give you a higher stance when driving, and that actually does really well for your feet space, since I can move my feet up and down, um, so it's definitely going to make for a very comfortable rear seat. Now in addition to that, we can also recline these seat backs. And as far as this Model Y's features, here in the middle, you are going to have the same vents off the Model 3. However, you will not have your own climate controls. And down below, uh, Tesla has actually swapped out the smart charging USBs for USB type C's. Um, and heated rear seats actually are standard on all of these early run models. Um, the performance and long range will have that as standard equipment. And as far as, you know, this middle seat here, I do want to talk about this since it is three inches wider. Uh, this middle seat is definitely going to be a lot more comfortable than in the Model 3. And your central armrest is also going to be a lot wider. Now walking up to the Model Y's cargo area, it is going to have a standard power tailgate. However, you do not have the hands-free function. And looking inside of this cargo area, obviously this is going to be a large, large improvement over the standard Model 3. Um, now I do not have a spec with the seats in place, but if you fold the seats, you're going to find 68 cubic feet of space, uh, which is pretty much on par with most of its rivals like the BMW X3. Um, and also keep in mind that this uh, Model Y does have quite a bit of hidden storage around. So on both sides of the uh, this, the trunk area, you do have a large storage area. And then if you lift the floor up, you have another gigantic storage compartment. And this does actually go all the way through um, into this area because we do not have the third row option for this Model Y. And then as far as folding the seats, it does fold 40, 20, 40 split. And you do also have buttons on the side to electrically fold it. Now, of course, with any electric vehicle, you don't actually have an engine up under the hood. So we do actually have additional space to store stuff in this Model Y. Um, now, we don't actually have a measurement for this specific area. However, it is larger than the Model 3, and it's definitely enough space to put a few weekend bags back here. Now, here at the passenger seat, you do have the same adjustments as the driver. And as far as the glove box, it is unfortunately not any larger than the Model 3. However, it is still nicely felt lined and illuminated. And up top, we do have a sun visor with LED mirror and light, and it does also detach as well as extend.
acceleration. <laughs> my stomach, oh my goodness. Crazy. Pure craziness. So, <laughs> that's right, I have to actually say things. Um, first taking off in this Model Y performance. Uh, it is very fast. <laughs> this is a three and a half second zero to 60 car. So, you know, we're talking elite level performance, right? Um, to frame your mind, um, this is like a competitor to say the GLC AMG 63 S. So like, not even just the yeah. performance version, but the hardest core perfor performance versions of the German competitions. Um, and it's still faster um, at the end of the day as well, even with yeah. that in mind. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I do need to talk about the ranges um, because with this performance, you're probably not going to get the EPA EPA rated range because you're probably going to be flooring it after every single um, red light or whatnot. But so as far as the ranges are concerned, for the performance model, that's going to come in at 315 miles in its standard configuration, not with the performance upgrade. If you go with the performance upgrade, it's reduced to 280 miles. Um, and then if you go for the long range, that's just 316. Um, and if you're looking for an MPGE, you're looking at 121. Um, I don't know how much means to you, but um, that's what it is rated at, which is better than the Model 3. And now that we are up to speed here, I do want to talk about the Model Y's uh, ride quality. Um, we've driven this for a little bit at this point, um, and we're kind of getting used to a few of the differences from the Model 3. And I am happy to report that even in this performance trim level, that this does ride uh, pretty much smoother than the Model 3, um, as it should, because this is a still, even in performance trim, it is still a family SUV. Um, so it is softly sprung, um, more so than the Model 3, um, but it is probably right in line with its German competitors as far as its uh, ride quality. Yeah, on the performance end. Yeah. Now, you're not going to mistake this for an S-Class, you know. No. Since this is a performance, and we're on 21-inch wheels, you know, there's certainly plenty of uh, feel as far as road imperfections and stuff like that. So if you want the ultimate in comfort with your Model Y, then you're probably going to want to go for the long range or the standard range when that comes out, or at least get the smaller yeah. wheels. And for reference here, I will go ahead and get out our sound level meter here to give you a reading. So going around 45 miles an hour with the sound level meter, we're coming in around 57 decibels. Um, if I remember correctly, the BMW X3 we were just in, um, that that came in around 57, but it was at 60 miles an hour. So it's going to be a little bit louder than some of the German competition, a little bit less um, solid, I guess, would you say, in the... the Insulated, yeah. yeah. I think I can hear, like, you know, more wind noise and stuff coming from the windows. They're you're not going to have like double paned windows yeah. or anything like that. Just something to keep in mind. <laughs> Good God, that's ridiculous. Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> oh my. Oh my Woo. gosh. Oh my. Woo. <laughs> I take that back. You can't do too many of those. I think you'll have like permanent brain damage. Yeah, organ, I, don't, organ I, don't think, failure. I don't think you could do too many oh of those my. in a row. Like, you'd probably get dizzy or Whew. get a headache or something. It's violent. Now, of course, since you can only get this vehicle right now in performance and long range versions, both of those are going to come standard with the dual motor all wheel drive system. Um, 
Now you will eventually be able to get the rear drive standard range yeah. once that comes out next year. But as of now, it's all going to be all wheel drive. Um, and then, you know, you don't really have any traditional transmission. It's just kind of a single speed. Uh, you know, so that's why you just rock it straight off. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys will be curious, now that we're just kind of cruising down the highway, you know, what exactly is different uh, with this Model Y as opposed to the 3, you know, when you're kind of cruising along. Uh, we drove the, our 3 all the way up from Cincinnati and we actually got directly into this, so we kind of have a pretty good taste of, you know, what's different about the 2. For one, you can definitely tell that this thing sits up higher. Of course, it does actually sit up higher, uh, but Tesla has added these like little boxes to make your seating yeah, position. Yeah, a lot of it's in the yeah. seating position more than it is the actual vehicle being taller. Yeah, but you can definitely tell that. Um, as far as like the mirrors are different, you just feel a little bit more like a SUV commanding presence here in this Model Y. never gets old. <laughs> wow. Now we finally made it out here to a little bit of twisty road um, so we can get into the dynamics which are yeah. of course very important for a performance model like this. Um, and I have to say really it's remarkably uh, buttoned down. You kind of just forget that you're driving an SUV. <laughs> Like, yeah. it doesn't feel much different than a Model 3, and that's a great compliment, you know. Um, and that really goes for, like, the whole car in general, you know. When things are similar to a Model 3, having dynamics that are similar to a sedan but in a crossover is a great compliment. Yeah. And also the Model 3, you know, it, it does a good job of, you know, we've said this in our reviews and stuff, having the battery flat across the floor, it really does keep it planted in the road, and it has great dynamics. Um, and ha to have any of that carry over is really good. Now I will say from here at the passenger seat, you can definitely feel a little bit more body roll with this Y as you would expect. It is seven inches taller, but um, that's really too dramatic or anything. Uh, what I notice most of all is just a different steering setup. A little bit lighter across the board. Um, so I was playing around with the steering things off camera and uh, I would say the sport steering, so the heaviest steering of the Model Y, is equivalent to the standard steering in our Model 3. So uh, everything's just kind of dialed back a little bit. Comfort's going to be even yeah. looser still. Um, you know, but still remarkably fast responding. Uh, you know, and you have pretty good road feel as well. <laughs> a really rough road um, but this is a good time to point yeah. out a few things that we've noticed um, this Model Y it is early build but it kind of has a symphony of rattles. creeks and rattles in here um, I think I'm not an expert but I believe it, it sounds like they're coming from the windows kind of the maybe the, the rear window yeah the rear windows yeah. perhaps don't seal exactly right and they vibrate um, but yeah when you start hitting bumps and stuff you're gonna hear some some creaks and some things like that so at the beginning of the video I asked you know is this just a raised model 3 or is it something more and I would say that the answer is kind of a mixture of both um, it definitely is something more it has a lot more actually a lot more space um, and a lot more of basically the body style that American people are craving. I, I think with this car, um, you, people get hung up on the fact that it's very similar. It being very similar to the Model 3 is the best thing that Tesla could do for the Model Y because yeah. that makes it a standout in terms of dynamics, in terms of technology. Um, you know, and there's a lot of things that measure up really, really well in this class of vehicle. I think um, the biggest thing is going to be once Tesla gets production of this Model Y up, I think it's going to be hard for a lot of people to choose a Model 3 over this Model Y.
Alrighty, so as far as the pricing is concerned for this all-new Y model, um, the standard range model is not actually out yet, um, but when it will come out, that's going to start at 39000 That's going to be out in a, probably a year or so, um, but for now, you have the choice between long range and performance. The long range is going to be 52990 and then you have this one right here, which is the performance at 60990 so an $8,000 price premium for this performance. Alrighty, and now as far as how this particular Model Y is equipped, um, so we have the performance and we also have the uh, one of the few options which is the full self-driving for $7,000. Um, and then when you add in the $100 order fee or whatever, this total uh, as tested price is going to come in at $67,000. 990 bucks so pretty much fully loaded up you're looking at around 68 grand for this model y which is definitely a lot of money um, but it is still a lot less than some of its german competition like the bmw x3 m um, and this honestly has way better performance than that so that's definitely something to keep in mind well guys, we really appreciate you watching this in-depth look of the 2020 Tesla Model Y Performance. We really appreciate you watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and stay tuned for more Tesla Y content coming soon and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.